DoorDash went public, middle of the pandemic, and I remember actually you were coming on Bloomberg and the price doubled at the open. And we were coming out of obviously terrible economic times, you know, the depths of the pandemic. What did that feel like when, you know, you're going out into the world starting to sell to public investors and the price just doubles? It was certainly very exciting. It was exhilarating. You know, it was the first time that, you know, our company went public. <laughs> first time that I had ever um, mm -hmm. undergone any of those ex types of experiences mm -hmm. before. But at the, you know, in the back of my head, I, you know, it was that saying that you're never as good or as bad as they say you are. And so just remember that. So tease that out for me a little bit, because the big question is how much do customers keep ordering out in a high inflation environment? How much long term, you know, sustainability and growth is there really? Even though COVID is now effectively sustained and we understand how to live with it, Customers are continuing to order. Those that joined us during the pandemic, they're still ordering at about the same rates as those who joined us before the pandemic. And that's because eating out and getting things delivered are pretty complementary. On the second point around inflation, you know, I can say that in the last 60 years in, in looking at the data, spend in restaurants and in grocery have only declined in two of those 60 years, including high inflationary times, much higher than what we observe today. And so what I think I take um, you know, solace in, even though I see the fact that there is high inflation, is that customers are going to continue spending on food. And our job is to bring greater and greater affordability. More broadly, the economy is in a tough position. Uh, your competitors have announced layoffs and hiring freezes and slowdowns. Is DoorDash considering any of these? I think we've been fortunate mostly because most of our investments that happened during the pandemic really were meant to build new businesses. Mm -hmm. And those new businesses have continued to grow. New businesses, you know, beyond restaurants in categories like grocery, convenience, um, or retail. Um, new businesses overseas. You know, we announced a large acquisition uh, in Volt where that really helped double our overall addressable market to 700 million people. New businesses in building an advertising business. New businesses expanding our services and building a platform to help businesses build their own digital operations. Do you see DoorDash as more of a super app of the future or is it something different? Well, I, I see DoorDash as really solving two problems. You know, problem one is how do we bring incremental demand to all the physical businesses as they kind of figure out their own digital in-house capabilities. And the second problem we're trying to solve is bring tools to these businesses. There's still a lot of competition in delivery. Who do you think survives the delivery wars? Who doesn't and why? Well, delivery is a scale economy's game. You know, at the end of the day, you can survive even doing deliveries from a singular store. You know, there's still mom and pop pizza shops and Chinese restaurants that do their own delivery. Do you see DoorDash as a challenger to like Walmart, Amazon? Well, I see DoorDash, um, you know, as a champion of local businesses and physical businesses. I don't think that a world in which we just get what we want to buy or consume for a few places mm -hmm. is a world that, again, is as worth enjoying living in. <laughs> so our job is to make sure that all of these businesses, all of the millions of physical businesses globally, can continue to compete. I do a lot of DoorDash, helps me be a working mom. Whenever I interview you, I get pings from Dashers, and some of them say they don't get paid enough. Some of them seem pretty angry. What's your response to them? We want the local economy to grow and to thrive. That includes Dashers. We have three million Dashers that come to the platform every single quarter. And so it's really important to me what they say. And it's in fact why you know the company, myself included, we still Dash do deliveries, in other words, once a month. It's you why, still do deliveries yeah, once why, a month? It's why we have a Dasher community council that we started three four years ago now. I want to see one of your memos after it, a delivery. Are you like sending notes? To, I'm texting, to you know, it's not even after the delivery. I'm texting, you know, it, well, not texting while I'm driving, but te t t texting after, after I complete the order. From your deliveries, what have you learned? Everything, all of the details, everything from, you know, pay considerations, um, um, everything from um, operations at a store, you know, which stores are a bit faster in their operations or more consistent, which mm -hmm. stores are, are less consistent, where do you find the last parking space in downtown San Francisco? Um, all of these details matter. Mm -hmm. They matter for efficiency, mm -hmm. they matter for driver pay, they matter for merchant earnings. Mm -hmm. And so as a result, you know, what I say to Dashers is 
please continue to talk to me. I'm just Tony at DoorDash, and we're always trying to, you know, make things better. We're not saying that we're perfect, but when we look at, um, you know, the data that we've collected, you know, the average dasher is making $24, $25 an hour nationwide when they're, on, when they're doing deliveries. And so, and, and most dashers are pretty satisfied.